Have you seen American Sniper? Yes, we did. Yes. <laughs> and what did you think? It was very moving. Um, and at the end of the movie, no one in the theater spoke. It was very quiet. And then everyone applauded. And it was amazing to see a man that gave so much of his life for our country. It was pretty good. Um, it was very consistent with um, uh, like the book in some parts. Yeah, I love the story. As far as the movie goes, I thought I thought it could have been better from an, like an action part. I would have liked to see a little bit more of the war than more of kind of the the back and forth with the you know family and war stuff. So you don't like the emotional? You just want the no, the, the action? Like, I like the action. Yeah, absolutely. You just want to see people get blown up? No, not necessarily that, but I, I think that... Um, well, isn't that what war is? It is. I did, yeah. I went to West Point. So, I, I look, I'm 100% for the purpose of the movie. It was a very impactful movie. What kind of impact did it have on you? Uh, in all honesty, I didn't know that it was a movie about um, the person who the story is about, Chris, and Chris Kyle. And <clears throat> I remember when it was in the news, and only at the end really did it make sense that it was like... That was his life story, or his pretty much his life story, and it was very impactful. I mean, they were playing taps at the end. That's a way to just, draw, you know, draw all you know all kinds of emotions to the to the film. I thought it was amazing. And and why is that? Um, because it's like so crazy how that actually happens. Very emotional. It was sad to me. I don't know. I had a hard time watching it, but I thought it was very well done and. Yeah, emotional, I don't know. <laughs> Chris Kyle is definitely a hero. I mean, my parents were both served in the army in Israel. Um, they're Israelis, and, you know, they weren't in battle. But everybody, if you can, uh, get, you know, give some input and uh, volunteer and make a difference, and you're a hero, and that's better than sitting on your couch and having an opinion that's un unsubstantiated and really just, you know, like, there's no backing to. Would you say Chris Kyle is a hero for defending the homeland then? 100%. So you remember the scene when it goes over there is right. So it's a, a, by default, you know, you deciding to go over there and fight for our country. You're absolutely defending the homeland. Yes, absolutely, definitely. And and why? What you know? What what makes him a hero? He went over and above. He did everything for his country. He believed he was protecting us. Yeah, I agree. He had an undying love for keeping the people he cared about safe, as well as people he didn't even know. So. So it was because he was he was defending people here at home, yeah. right? Yes. Do you think defending your homeland and risking your life to do that makes you a hero? Absolutely. And it's hard it's I mean it's hard for me to relate, but I actually got a draft bill sent to me from Israel because I'm an Israeli citizen and I didn't uh, go to the, to the army over there because I was in college. So, you know, in some respect in hindsight, I think about it, wow, I should have made a difference in, in that way, but I'm making a difference here in America. I'm, I'm adding to the economy. I'm giving jobs to people. I'm making money for people. And, you know, that's a, you know, a different way of participating in society. A lot of people are just apathetic and they just sit on their couch and they think that uh, their opinion, um, you know, is going to do something, but really taking action is what does something. I believe he was protecting our nation in a time of war. What was the threat to our nation? Terrorism. From Iraq? Uh, from Al-Qaeda, from different terrorist groups. Not in just one country, all over the place. When did Al-Qaeda come to Iraq? Uh, they're in Syria. They move around. Well, this is an important question because you're saying that you support him being, yeah. you know, going after Al-Qaeda in Iraq. So when did Al-Qaeda get to Iraq? Never in Iraq. But I'm really glad that Saddam Hussein was taken out of power because he actually had plans to attack America, whether people realize it or not. What were those plans? When we went in there, we found the plans. Like the weapons of mass destruction? It means to be a hero is protecting others and keeping them out of the harm's way. Like protecting your homeland? Um, protecting anyone who, like, protecting anyone that you think is um, like family, I guess. Do you think that uh, Chris Kyle is a hero? Yes, I do. And why do you say that? Because um, he saved so many people. Do you think it was because like he was defending his, his homeland? Yes. So if someone is defending their homeland, that makes them a hero? Uh, yes. So what would you say about someone who goes out and, and kills a bunch of people that are heroes for defending their homeland? Uh... <laughs> I 
don't know. Well, what do you think about the people that Chris Kyle was killing in the movie as a sniper? What were they doing? Um, uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, you, you know what the war, the movie's about, right? The war in Iraq, right? I mean, yeah. So what were the what were the the bad guys in the movie? What what were they doing? Defending their homeland. So are you, are you saying that the insurgents in Iraq are the heroes? No. What you said before, defending your homeland made you a hero. You now you're saying the insurgents were defending their homeland, right? Do I think Bush was saying? I think he had some issues, <laughs> but he was a Christian. So that's some issues? He had some issues. Like talking to God, that you know God what? told him to go kill all the people? He's from Texas, and if you're from Texas, you're not that bad. Right? Texas. California and Texas. Where are you from? It sounds like you're, you're trying to avoid a rational argument by throwing in arbitrary geographic associations and saying that if you happen to be from a specific area, that's good. It's kind of a dangerous, irrational presumption. Bush. Bush is from Texas. He's a good guy. He also like He's actually not from Texas. Do you know where he's really from? Where? He's from Connecticut. He's born in Connecticut? Yeah, and he, went to, he grew up in Connecticut and was a transplant to Texas. I did not know that. I learned a new fact today. Isn't that crazy? I love American Sniper. What's the purpose of the movie? Well, I think it's to highlight a, a hero's journey, and the, the, what he did over there deserves all of our respect, and you know, I think it's a great, it's good to see people in Hollywood honor a guy like that, right? Well, it's also really important for you know, the attempt now to get boots on the ground back in Iraq so that we can finish the job that we did there so that the, the, the Marines that, that yeah. died sure. when I was there you know, didn't yeah. die in vain, right? I mean, you yeah. support that, right? Oh, look, absolutely. We're doing a half-assed job right now. Do you think a movie like this and the impact on you is going to make it more likely for you to support Obama's proposed plan to send ground troops back into Iraq to finish the job that, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that we did earlier in that country? I think it would because ISIS is really getting out of hand right now and that movie really um, portrays things that need to be taken care of in a very heavy way. If our soldiers need help, I support it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, if, if Obama wants to go back to Iraq and, you know, kill some more terrorists, then hoorah, let's kill all the terrorists. Hold on a second. I, I just realized something because I, when I was in Iraq, we were we were dealing with insurgents, right? And yeah. you remember the scene in the movie, the the first kill that he has, he kills a, a mother and and her son, right? For sure. What what are they doing in that scene? They're trying to take a Russian grenade and throw it at a squadron of American soldiers. And where are they? Somewhere in Iraq, I believe. Well, you remember what the city looked like, right? I mean, they're in like a city square, and it's it's pretty bombed out, like full of rubble. It looked like a war zone, yeah. So it looked like their city just got really messed up by someone from, from outside. It does, yeah. And who did that? Uh, well, it could have been the Americans, it could have been, the, it could have been Saddam. Uh, no, Saddam was not bombing any cities in Iraq during the war. It was probably the Americans that ruined it up. Yeah. So doesn't that mean that like, the mother and the kid, they were defending like, their city against against a, a foreign invader, like an, a, someone who was, who was coming in and, like, doesn't that make them the heroes? W which people in that scene were defending their homeland? Both people were, but unfortunately, they were gonna kill our soldiers, so he had no choice. Well, how is that possible that if, if the American troops are defending their homeland and the Iraqi troops, or the Iraqi citizens that are in the insurgency are defending their homeland, I mean, you can't, you can't have, have both, right? There's got to be one that's, that's right and wrong and, and morally justified in that sense, right? That's why I say I don't support the war, but I support our soldiers. I think it's just different perspectives. I mean, from their perspective, they think they're defending. They, I don't think that they, they know any better. If someone's a hero for defending their homeland, 
Are you trying to tell me that the insurgents in that movie, the guys that Chris Kyle was killing who are trying to defend Iraq from the invaders, are you trying to tell me that the guys that killed my buddies were, were heroes? No. The, the people that try to kill the characters in the movie, or in this case, um, other soldiers, are not because they're defending something that's not being rightfully defended. Like, they want to kill other, other people, in this case, Americans. So, If a mugger is, like, breaking into your house, right, and you shoot them, now, would you, would you say that, that they're the victim or that they were the, the criminal yeah, in this case? The criminals. So are you trying to say that the troops that I was serving with no. in Iraq are criminals no, for invading no. a country? No, they were and sent there. They were sent there by our commander-in-chief. Well, what if, what if the guy breaking into my house was sent there by, like, a mafia boss to break into my house? I mean, he's just following orders, right? Yeah, but you have to defend yourself. Right, well, I'm going to defend myself. So, so you're saying that the Iraqis should be defending themselves. No, that you're, you're twisting it. <laughs> you're twisting it all up. I'm just saying... I'm that, trying to straighten it out. Well, there's no straightening it out. It's too, it's too confusing. <laughs> our, our soldiers are over there, and I support our soldiers. I support what you did, and I support our fellow soldiers. And whether or not we're supposed to be there or who's defending who, it's so confused now to me in my mind. So you don't support what the troops are doing? doing but you support them doing it yes i support our soldiers 100 percent they're extremists so i guess they're protect they're protecting what they believe in but in not a very good way because they're they're harming others and doing what they they do so and probably taking over a government too so as well well wasn't that what chris kyle was doing yeah. Who in that sea? Well, he he is, but it, anyone else who's in that convoy, anyone who's there is defending the homeland. But they're in Iraq. Yeah. That's, That's not just, their homeland. Yeah, thank God they're not here, right? What did, who's, who's they? The, you mean the terrorists? Yeah. Absolutely. Like from 9-11? No, but any, any of these guys. I mean, the Al-Qaeda, that's just one element of these. Before the invasion of Iraq, how many terrorists were there in Iraq? Um, you know, I don't know the answer to that. How many terrorists from the 9-11 hijackings were from Iraq? Um, I don't know. I think most of them from Saudi Arabia, actually. The answer is zero. Zero, yeah. Do you think that the uh, mother and the kid were actually there defending their homeland when they're in a city that's been bombed out by a foreign invader and they're trying to repel them? I mean, if you were in their situation and your country had been attacked and was being occupied and martial law was being imposed yeah. by a country that you never threatened, wouldn't, wouldn't you stand up here and defend your homeland? I would, but um, I, don't know, I don't know what parallel you're trying to make. You, so you don't think the people that live in Iraq have a right to defend their homeland? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. No, the problem is the, the, the threat of terrorism, and it's growing everywhere. I, don't think it's, I, I think it's worse than it was before, and I think all the progress we made and all the sacrifice that was made over there is probably sadly um, lost. If you think that the war is bad, why do you think that the war is supporting this country? That's where it's confusing. Because we were attacked, don't forget, we were attacked on 9-11. And then... What was the connection with that to Iraq? That's what's confusing. You're confused about that? I am. Are you confused about that? <laughs> I don't want to talk about this anymore. Yeah, okay, because it's pretty clear, you know, weapons of mass destruction yeah. was the justification for yeah. Iraq. It had nothing to do with 9-11, and it turned out that that was a lie. It's a lie. So. But we're still over there, and our soldiers are still there, so. So, so don't you think, like, having a critical examination of, of this really important life and death issue would, would be worthwhile? That, that we shouldn't just say, hey, we support the troops, but we, we don't have any understanding That's of what's going on? No offense. I don't have all the details. And that to make that decision, and unfortunately, I don't trust our president. Sorry. But you want people, and you support them following his orders. I support our soldiers because that's what we have to do. At the end of the day, this economy is built on war. You know, religion is built on war. Like there were actually no terrorists, unless you count Saddam in in Iraq. You know, as as the government there, but uh, it was for weapons of mass destruction. Remember when we found the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? I recall, uh, I don't remember the exact moment, but sure. They, they were never found. Okay, well, uh, we found something. What was it that he was fighting for for us in the war in Iraq in terms of the problem of terrorism as you describe it? What, he was, he was over there, uh, I don't know if he was there, I can't remember what years he was there, but he was there to, to push back 
Al-Qaeda, the spread of global terrorism. Well, it, it wasn't Al-Qaeda, it was the insurgency. So if everyone has a right to defend themselves, and the people in Iraq have a right to defend themselves against the American invaders coming in, doesn't that make Chris Kyle the bad guy? Doesn't that make him one of the people that's like killing them for defending their homeland? But he was taking orders, so if he, and that's what always been in the military, take orders from your superiors. Oh, okay. Well, hold on. Just following orders, just following orders. Where have, where have I heard that before? That sounds like a really familiar phrase. Well, following orders is what, if we could give an example, um, when in World War II, when the Nazis were killing um, uh, Jews, yeah. they were put in a trial. And that's what a lot of people said, but then they ended up executing their superiors from, and that's what was called the Nuremberg Trials. So they... But the superiors were executed because they were the one giving the other people the order. Well, they also said they were just following orders from Hitler, right? So do you think if, if that's a, a good excuse, like if someone's just following orders, then, then it's okay to do horrible and moral things? In, if they're following orders from their highly superiors, then I guess yes, because they don't really have a choice to do it. Well, you have to? If you were over there, I supported you. I would support you. If you went tomorrow, I support all of our soldiers. That sounds like a really dangerous, unthinking position. Like that's. Position. Hey, let's say I'm about to stab you in the face, right? And you're you're we're wrestling on the ground, and and you've you've got my arm, and you've got me stuck here, right? And 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 you and and as as you've got me stuck, you you reach around in your back pocket. You're about to stab me and and protect yourself and keep yourself from getting hurt. And then someone comes in and takes that knife out of your hand, and I stab you and kill you. That person, by your definition, or they were doing the right thing because they were protecting me, right? They pulled the knife out of your hands? No, out of your hands, so you couldn't defend yourself. So, like, you're saying Chris Kyle was defending other soldiers in Iraq, right? Yeah, he was. But if they were doing something immoral, like killing people who are just defending their homeland and invading another country, then he's helping someone do something immoral by defending them, right? Doing something immoral for them to defend themselves. In some ways, I, I, I guess that he was doing, he was doing something moral for his troops, but I guess he was doing something immoral in the eyes of this, uh, the people of Iraq or whichever yeah. country, country they were in. I don't understand. What are, you, what are you really driving at here with the question? Well, if the people in Iraq who were shooting at me we're defending their homeland. Doesn't that make me the aggressor and the villain and them the heroes and Chris Kyle the bad guy because he was killing people that were heroically defending their homeland against a foreign invader? Uh, that's not how I look at it. Why not? Because I, I, I'm an American and I support what our American troops do for us. So that's an identity response. That's not really like a rational reason. You understand the difference, right? No, I do understand, but I, I, I think that uh, if supporting the mission of what our country needs to solve to fight terrorism and if that's the battleground and that's where it happens to be and I'm, I'm picking our side. Okay, well Iraq had nothing to do with terrorism and the justification for the invasion. You know this, right? It was weapons of mass destruction that turned out to be a lie. So you're conflating these issues and I would hope that if you really care about this country for an issue as important as life or death for a soldier like I was in the Marines, right. that you would take the time to at least like get your facts straight on that. Let's say you're an Iraqi and I'm, an, I'm a Marine in Iraq like I was, right? And you know I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt you. I'm gonna violate you. I'm gonna I might tie you up. I might just occupy your house like like Chris Kyle did in the movie, right? You know he occupied houses where he kept the families captive so that he could use their houses as sniper positions. So would it make you feel any better if I told you, hey man, it's okay. I'm just following orders. We should be looking at what the big threat is if we really care about protecting our fellow Americans. And it's clear that our own government is a bigger threat. And it's pretty cowardly if you know this to say, hey, I'm gonna go after the little threat in Iraq that's really not even a terrorist threat, as you know, but because of propaganda that you've obviously been subjected to, you have some misunderstanding of this, right? So a real hero would be someone who actually goes after the big threat and is really honestly protecting people. And if someone knew this, and we all really kind of know this. So, let me ask you this, it would I gotta, be, and I gotta go, so we're late for our movie. So you don't think Chris Kyle's a hero, that's your point, that's why you're doing this. 
I don't think it really matters whether you address someone as a hero or not, but I think holding... You've been asking me, right. so I want to know what you... No, no, that, well, I'm answering. I mean, I think that the concept of holding someone up as a hero uh -huh. is a very dangerous concept. Understood. And, 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 and it's... Fair enough, fair enough. But, but just answer, do you think he's a hero? No. I, I think he's done good things and he's done bad things, but I think in terms of the main point of his life, yeah. which was to be America's deadliest sniper, that was he was part of a criminal enterprise okay. that he may have been duped yeah. into being a part of, right. but in a sense, he still bears responsibility for that. Yeah, fair enough. And I respect your opinion. You fought for us, so I got to give you your opinion. Well, I that's the thing is, I didn't. I was fighting for bankers, politicians, and war profiteers, and now you know that. Yeah, understood. Nice to meet you. All right, thanks for your hey. time. Can I give you a sticker? I uh, really appreciate no. it. You said that just following orders is, like, is, is an adequate excuse to do immoral things, but don't you think that we have a responsibility? Like, I chose to join the Marines. Every order that I get, I choose to follow, right? In fact, we have a responsibility, and they tell us when we join the Marines, that you are supposed to disobey illegal orders or orders, you know, and, and personally, I would say orders that disagree with your conscience. If you're given an order that says, you know, is doing something that you know is morally wrong and you absolutely know for certain, you have a moral duty to disobey those orders. And Chris Kyle had a choice every single time he pulled the trigger on someone when instead he could have said, you know what, this war is wrong. I'm going to go home and I'm going to make sure that everybody knows what the reality is. Well, during the film, it was during a 9-11 attack and that's when he joined in, in the case of the film um, everyone at that time. he joined before it actually he joined he joined um, before 9-11 oh okay so I guess he but what does 9-11 have to do with Iraq that's isn't that why we went to Iraq in the first place no it was because Bush lied about yeah. intelligence and said that there were weapons of mass destruction there don't you think we should hold people to a higher moral standard and critically examine whether what they're doing is is moral or not Absolutely. Absolutely. Before, like before we now, support them. Why don't you tell President Obama that? <laughs> I have. <laughs> He's an idiot. All right, I have to go. But thank you for your service. Well, what do you mean by that? Uh, he's an idiot. No, no. What do you mean by thank you for your service? Thank you for what you did when you were over in Fallujah as a soldier. But you said the war was a bad idea. Why would you thank me for doing something that was a bad idea? Over there to do what you had to do, and you gave your, you put your life on the line. But I didn't think. Like, you know, we're eight times more likely now to be killed by a cop than by a terrorist. I personally, if there's a big threat, right, there's a big threat that is the American police state and the American government, and there's a little threat that is terrorism. And I say, I'm going to be really brave. I'm going to go after the little threat, and I'm going to do what the big threat tells me to do. The big threat is government here, right? Yeah. That's pretty cowardly, isn't it? I mean, shouldn't I be Are saying... I, I was, yeah, and I think... You think you were a coward being a soldier over there carrying carrying a rifle and, and, and shooting at people? That makes you a coward? Because if the troops defended freedom, they'd be attacking the government. And that's what I do now is I challenge people to think critically and examine these contradictions and see where we can call ourselves to a higher moral standard as a society. I've learned from my mistakes, and I'm trying to bring that to people, and, and I hope you're not avoiding... A, a rational conclusion of this conversation no, because I'm challenging you I'm challenging you to think about this in a different way right that. if your country was invaded by foreign <laughs> occupiers and you had those skills you had sniper skills I mean wouldn't you go try to shoot those people to protect your homeland if I had sniper skills and people were trying to kill my people yeah okay well I got a question for you then what's a bigger risk to your life the police or the terrorists Okay, uh, do you know where we are right now? Yeah. We're in Santa Monica. Right. Okay. There's n the only risk I got is if I eat bad sushi or not. <laughs> like, let's be honest. Like, we are grateful that we have troops that go overseas and do the dirty shit that we don't want to do, the dirty battles that we don't want to do. And as a taxpaying citizen, I'm grateful for that. And people who complain here on their couch, it's like, go over there and see that. Hold on. That's you're, you're eight times more likely to be killed by a cop than by a terrorist. And you're that's someone what I'm, that's what I'm who, ha no, you're, you're more likely to be killed by a cop than a terrorist. And you're someone who sat on his couch when you had the opportunity to go to the military. Oh, yeah. And you're giving me opinions when I was there. And I'm telling you that the war is a crime. And that someone who goes and shoots people who are trying to defend their homeland is not a hero. And that for you to sit here and say, we need to support the troops, I need to keep paying taxes, this is the right thing to do, is really absurd when you know that there's a greater threat here at home. You even know this. You see how maybe this movie was trying to give you like a bit of a warped perspective with, with like preventing you from just stepping back a little bit and seeing the bigger picture here that the people that 
Chris Kyle was killing an American sniper were the real heroes, that they were defending their homeland against an American invading force? Um, yeah. So there really was no connection to Iraq. But it's funny that, that you've been given that impression. Do you think, you think movies like this have, have done something perhaps to warp your perspective on the world and propagandize you to support some positions that might just be in the government's best interest and their sponsors in the military industrial complex's best interest rather than in the best interest of the American people? Um, I would say movies like, like American Sniper and other American like, um, like military movies like Act of Valor, they really do kind of warp the, the mindset of an individual because like they, they always portray like they, they are the people that do like, do like in the Navy SEALs or whichever, they, when they graduate, they, all, they obviously have people who got them through that. And most likely those people are the ones who get them through every single deployment. And like it has like an act of like brotherhood in many senses. And so you're saying they throw these emotional things at you to get you to stop thinking so much? Not thinking, but just... Um, thinking critically? To not make you think straight. They make you think, but just uh, not... not so they cloud your rational thinking with emotions and make you think all crooked. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Thanks so much for having the open mind to see that about American Sniper. I really appreciate it. Why did you sign up to fight? Why did you put your line and sign your name on the dotted line to fight for your country? Because I used to share a lot of the same delusions about this government and about militarism that you do. But I've learned since then. I've learned from my experience. I've learned that I was part of a criminal organization, part of a criminal enterprise in the invasion of Iraq that so most people misunderstand. Criminal enterprise. Absolutely, because you're, you're it uses the United States of America criminal enterprise. The government. Yes. Do you think our government is not criminal? Please don't post this. I don't want my I don't want this on the internet. Oh, can I don't have my permission? Okay. You don't have my permission to post this. For example, the recent movie American Sniper takes you to a place called Amero Fantasyland where violent thugs, murderers, serial killers can be heroes, where the government can do no wrong, where the military exists to keep us free, and every war ever fought by the American government has been entirely just and righteous, where the police exist only to serve and protect, and everyone is perfectly free and happy.